Okay, here we're looking at symbiosis, and this is a prime example of the title image right here. We have the rhino has a symbiotic relationship with the red-billed ox pecker here. We can see that right here. So the symbiotic relationship between these two different species. So let's go into a little bit more what this actually means. So as we look at this, well, symbiosis, let's define it first. It's the condition in which two or more kinds of organisms live together in close associations with one another. And there's major kinds, and I try to, this kind of image gives you a good kind of comparison between the two. We have a communalism, where one species benefits, and the other neither benefits nor is harmed. We have that here. We have one that's benefiting, and one that's not harmed, but really doesn't benefit either from the relationship. Then we have parasitism, where one species benefits while the other is harmed. So here we have the species benefiting, and the other one is actually harmed in this case. And mutualism. Both participating species have a benefit. So that's the third type of symbiosis. And this can occur in uh, aquatic environments as well as terrestrial ones. So we want to be mindful uh, that this is occurring not just on land. Let's look more specifically at mutualism here. A symbiotic relationship in which both species benefits. So here's an example with ants with aphids. Well, aphids provide the ants with food in the form of continuously excreted honeydew. And that's honeydew from the leaves. They're piercing the leaf parts and sugars coming out, and that's what the ants are feeding off of. Ants transport the aphids and protect them from predators. So aphids typically are fed on by lady beetles, and as a result, the ant offers protection for the aphids in exchange for the honeydew that it will provide from the plant. So this is a mutual benefit. The aphid uh, is getting the benefit of being moved around and protected, and the ant gets the benefit of the honeydew. Uh, ants and archaeids. So archaeids provide the ants with food in the form of belton bodies. Ants provide these archaeids with organic nutrients and protect them from herbivores and shading from other plants. So again, mutualistic, both species are benefiting in this case. Parasitism. So it's a little different. It's a symbiotic relationship. Uh, that is the form of predation. So the predator, or parasite, is much smaller than the prey. And the prey does not necessarily die. So in parasitism, we have the example of the mosquito and the human here. Uh, we have one benefiting and one hashing a negative effect here. So we have the mosquito and the human. We have the um, sea lamprey and the fish. We have the lion uh, and the wildebeest here. So parasitism, well, external parasites is an example. Ectoparasites feed on the exterior surface of an organism. So an example of this is the uh, is ticks feeding at us. They are ectoparasites because they're feeding on the surface of us. Parasitoids are insects or wasps that lay eggs on a living host. So a parasitic wasp will lay eggs inside of an insect, and then they'll grow, multiply, and divide within that insect. The prime example is here. Hornworms uh, that feed on tomato plants could be infected with a parasitic wasp. We see here uh, the offspring here. Um, it's basically eating the hornworm from the inside out. I include a little bit of a video here if you want to check that out. Remember, the link to the slides is in the description. Uh, we have here where this hornworm is getting fed from the inside out. That will stop its feeding, so not only save the tomato plant, but also cause more parasitic wasps to be in the local area. We have something called endoparasites, which live within the bodies. Endo meaning inside, within the bodies of vertebrates and invertebrates. Marked by much more extensive specialization than external parasites. So external parasites are kind of like grazers. Here, endoparasites need a very specific match. They might be in a specific area of the body. They might be targeting certain organs. So they're much more specialized. Uh, but endoparasites referring to parasites on the inside of an organism. Brood parasites, or birds, they lay eggs in the nest of other species. So brood species reduce the reproductive success of the foster parent host. So we have this example here. We have all these eggs, and one looks like it doesn't belong. Well, this is actually a cowbird. Uh, it's a brood parasite, meaning the female cowbird lays its eggs in the nest of, in this case, the eastern phoebe. So eastern phoebe is going to take care of all the young, all the eggs, uh, just like they were their own, but there's going to be this one that is actually a cowbird uh, that will be taken care of. Uh, so this is an example of a parasite because this eastern phoebe has to do that much more work to feed another individual, even though it's not the same species. Communalism, symbiotic relationship that benefits one species and neither harms nor benefits the other. Our example here is the clownfish and sea anemones. 
Clownfish gain protection by remaining among the anemone's tentacles here, kind of able to hide, uh, and they're also uh, immune to the stingingness that they may produce. And they also glean scraps uh, from the anemone's food. So again, not really harming or benefiting either or, but these are typically seen in close proximity to one another. So another example of that is the cattle egrets in African Cape buffalo. So egrets eat the insects off the buffalo, but there's no clear distinction between communalism and mutualism. It's difficult to determine if the second part benefits at all. So while the um, egret here is eating uh, the insects, the African Cape buffalo is not really a direct kind of benefit, nor a direct kind of harm uh, to that one there. So this kind of relationship may even be parasitic in some cases, but this is just one example of communalism, where in the symbiotic relationship, we often see the buffalo, you'll see the birds, where the birds are benefiting by eating the insects, uh, and the buffalo is really neither harmed nor benefited from this relationship. Same thing here with our sea enemies, and remember, we can occur in aquatic and terrestrial uh, ecosystems, and this is just some examples of symbiosis that does occur.